Welcome back to the Traders Network. Michael Yorba here, broadcasting on the Dallas KFXR 1190 AM Clear Channel Studios, streaming on iHeart app and yorbamedia.com. We've got Nick Santiago, president and CEO of Stocks.com. Nick, welcome back. Almost? Yep, can you hear me? Now I can, Nick. Hey, how'd the trading room go today? Oh, it was a banner trading day, Michael. Banner trading day. In fact, just before getting on the mic with you, we just caught another trade on the spiders for 30 cents. Uh, we had gap plays this morning. We hit three out of the park. Uh, I don't know what traders are waiting on. Just come on over. All right, all right. You wanted to start with, uh, let me see, Western Digital, is that it? I did want to start with Western Digital today because this stock is getting hit pretty hard. Ticker symbol is WDC. Uh, you can see it's trading around 82.56. Just uh, earlier in the month, uh, I guess we're at the end of April. Oh, we're just starting May today. But in early April, this stock, and this stock was trading at $95. I think traders need to stay away from this. It could get a little bit of a short-term bounce in the near term from an oversold condition. But do not look to get involved in this equity until it's around $71, $72. That's ultimately where this is going to go. And this is just another stock that was a market leader that is falling by the wayside. Okay. Um, there Are there any th indications that you think that, that this stock has pretty much had it, or is there some support for a long-term buy in anywhere in view? No, I think 70, 70, 71 is where you could get involved on it for a longer term. That's uh, what I up. But that's probably going to take a little bit of time before it gets down. That's still another 12 points away. But that's a level where I would look to buy the equity. Okay. All right. What's next? I'm um, looking at um, Cena, uh, Cena Corp. Ticker symbol is S-I-N-A. And I've been getting flooded with emails uh, from a lot of your listeners, in fact. And they've asked me, Nick, can you analyze Cena Corp? And I said, sure, I'll take a look at it. Well, right now, the stock is a bit oversold. It's trading at $48. The stock was a $90 stock at the start of the year. Now it's at 48 bucks. Do not get involved with this stock until it gets down to a round. Believe it or not, it has lower to go. And uh, when I calculated my uh, target today, around 36 bucks is where you can look to own Cinecorp. But this is just another former market leader that has just fallen off a cliff here. And we're seeing more and more of these uh, leading stocks really – nosedive in 2014, yet the major indexes are still at highs. So be very, very careful. Don't think things are on sale just because they're low. They can go lower. So I'm getting this already. The, the foundation has been crumbling, yet the facade is staying, is staying, uh, being propped up. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. That's exactly the theme. All right. All right. UNH. What about this one? Yeah, UNH is uh, a stock I bought, to, bought today, United Health Group. Um, I think it could give us a pretty nice bounce here. Um, looking at the equity, it, did, uh, it is making a potential lower, uh, higher low on the chart, the daily chart. So I, I'm going to look for a short-term bounce. I think traders can look to get involved in this one, uh, probably up towards the 77 level, and then uh, possibly even a little bit higher. But right now we'll take target one uh, uh, first, and then we'll look at the uh, secondary levels. But this is a stock that interests me for, for the long side at the moment. Okay. All right. Boeing. Yeah, I wanted to talk about Boeing because this is uh, a market-leading stock. It's also a big Dow component. It trades at $128 a share. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is a, a price cap-weighted index. So the higher the price uh, in the stock, the, the more weight the stock carries. Boeing right now is giving me a bearish pattern on uh, the weekly and the monthly charts. I'd be very, very careful with Boeing. Ultimately, this should fall down towards the $112, $112 level. Right now, it's at $128.50. Uh, traders can actually get short Boeing here. Just check for earnings. I'm not sure if they came out. You don't want to trade in front of them, but I am looking for Boeing to decline down to 112. Okay. All right. Uh, then you have, uh, what is it, Wilpro? No, I have uh, WTW, which is Weight Watchers. Oh, excuse me. So Weight Watchers International, uh, you know, the uh, weight loss program there. Um, this stock had a nice gap up today, and it's holding. Um, it's for, right now trading at 23.60, but ultimately I think this, this gap is going to – going to dissipate. Uh, I could see Weight Watchers going lower, so I think traders um, be a little bit careful on the Weight Watchers move today. I think it's kind of a little bit uh, early to proclaim it. it. It may need to go back down and test the $18 level before it moves higher. Okay. The, um, the, the 
other indices are, like as we discussed earlier, are, are, are really the NASDAQ and the Russell. They're kind of leading the charge down, and yet the, the Dow and the S&P are kind of getting held up. Do you have any insight as to what's, uh, what your thoughts are on that? Yeah, I, I think any time that you see something like that, it means that a lot of uh, the institutional money is uh, sticking with uh, the stocks that pay dividends. And if you notice, the NASDAQ and the Russell stocks are mostly growth companies, and the majority of the stocks in those two indices do not pay dividends. Uh, they're, they're, they're people buy them because they believe there's growth in the economy. And what this is showing us is that there is no growth in the economy. Growth is very, very lethargic and slow. So um, when I, whenever I see the Russell and the, and the NASDAQ lag the major indexes, they should be leading the major indexes, I have to look at it as a negative uh, sign. And, and for mostly for 2014, I'm going to probably be bearish for a fair amount of this year. Um, right now, the, I'm, I'm kind of in a neutral stance waiting for a, a, a topping signal, but that's not a good indication to see the NASDAQ and the Russell as weak as they are. No, I agree with you. Uh, any numbers, any resistance levels at this point that you're looking at on the major indexes? Well, right now, if you take a look at, uh, just say, the, the uh, NASDAQ composite, um, if this can take out its most recent low, and that recent low was made on uh, the 15th of April, which is tax day, ironically, um, then we, we probably will see uh, the NASDAQ composite uh, go a lot lower. I think we could test 3,700. So, I mean, that, that, that would still be a pretty decent decline, and that's, that's really my next support level for the NASDAQ composite, and I am watching it very closely. Okay, now, wait a minute. NASDAQ resistance, 3,700? Uh, support. Support would be 3,700. 3,700, okay. Yeah, right now it's at 4,120. Must on the NASDAQ composite. Okay. All right. Um, all right. L any other uh, indicators that you're looking at? Because you, you, you look at the copper market and all kinds of other things. Yeah. I mean, copper right now still looks very, very weak to me. I just told my members uh, just the other day that uh, I, I expect copper to move lower down to 277. So 277 to 275, that's where I'd probably start to get interested in copper. But Right now, I think copper is headed lower. I don't see any upside at all in copper. Okay. All right. So that, I take it you're looking for a continued contraction in the housing business? Yeah. I, I, you know, I, would just, I think it was um, last week I was just on your show, and we talked about the ITB, which is the Home Builders ETF. And right now it's trading at 2360. This is a good way to track all the home builders a, as a whole if you don't want to look at individual names. And this should go down to around 2150, in my opinion. So we have further to go in housing, and um, uh, the, the market in general, I think, is under some pressure overall. And what about the banking sector? I mean, you turned us on to J.P. Morgan. Yeah, I mean, when you look at J.P. Morgan here, just look what it has done uh, over the past month. It, it went from 61 down to around 54. I'm expecting it to go to 53. It may still take about two to three weeks for that to occur, but I do expect it to go lower. Goldman Sachs is a perfect example. This stock topped out around $181 a share in early 2014 in January. I mean, it just got, it just put in a low of 151 uh, just on uh, the 11th of April. So uh, we're definitely seeing some weakness across the board in, in banking in general. Um, I think that the, the yield curve is, is going to hurt the banks and, um, you know, we'll, we'll just have to – it's going to be a very interesting year in 2014. We're going to have a lot of good trading opportunities. And I think – you know, I don't want to sound like Debbie Downer, but there's good, going to be some good money to be made on both the short and long side. Yeah, uh, I'm expecting a lot more volatility myself. The U.S. dollar has been a point of contention for a lot of people right now. And uh, we're not at them, but we're real close to the, you know, the recent double bottom lows. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get your thoughts on, you know, maybe either micro or macro concept for that. For the, that yeah, audience. I mean, in the near term, maybe this double bottom will hold for a few days, maybe in a couple of weeks. But ultimately, the dollar is going lower. The dollar should uh, ultimately test uh, probably 76, uh, somewhere maybe 75, somewhere down there. So that I think the dollar is headed lower. Um, I think dollar yen is headed lower, and that's been the big carry trade that's been put into liquidity in the market. So um, dollar should go lower. I, I don't really see much upside. Okay. All right. Well, we're about out of time now, but please contact info so our guys can get in that trading room with you. 
Yeah, come on over to InTheMoneyStocks.com. You know, we offer a seven-day free trial to our intraday stock chat, and we also you'll get to see our live desktop. You'll get to get all of my morning gap plays. I've been putting out around five, six plays a day uh, while earnings season is going on. Today we hit four out of four out of six. Two didn't trigger, so we were basically four for four today. Come on over, take a seven-day free trial if you want our swing trades. Michael, we're, we're, I think we are now at somewhere around 50 trades with six losers in two, 50 winners, six losers in 2014. I don't know what traders are waiting for. That is a draw, jaw dropping number for consistency as well as win loss ratio. That's amazing. That's like off the charts. Uh, it's, it's been a great year and we're going to continue to do it. Um, we, we do it. We do our best and you know, we're not going to win every one. Like I said, we, we did have six losers. We do have six losers this year. So, uh, but, 50. but 50 winners. <laughs> All right, Nick, thanks so much, man. I appreciate this. Thank you, Michael. Have a great day. You too. Nick Santiago, president and CEO in the money stocks.com. That's where you need. I mean, come on, who has a record like that? That is amazing. All right, coming up next on the other side of this show, we're going to come back with Todd Schoenberger.